let's talk about RSUs or restricted stock units. Frankly, these are a lot simpler than their ISO counterparts. RSUs are also the only fancy equity technique that I have been personally exposed to at Meta when I worked there for checks notes three months, but I quit to do money with Katie full time before my first round of these shares would have even invested. C'est la vie, but it makes her a helpful example that we'll get to in just a minute. So in layperson's terms, an RSU is just a way for a public or large private company to incentivize you to stick around longer because they're paying part of your compensation in stock. But the catch is you don't get the stock every two weeks on your paycheck, like the cash portion of your compensation. That would be too easy and totally defeat the purpose. Instead, your shares are delivered to you on a vesting schedule. Vesting schedule is just a fancy phrase that effectively means the schedule on which they are ponying up the stock that you were promised. And uh, companies get hella crafty with these vesting schedules. Sometimes your shares will vest on a quarterly basis. Other times, nothing will vest until you've been with a company for a year, and then they'll vest at a rate of once per month. Other times, they'll tie vesting to individual or company performance, which honestly sounds really draconian. Anyway, if you're granted 1,000 shares that vest over four years, it's likely you'll get the first 250 shares after year one, the second set of 250 after year two, and so on. But the paperwork that you receive should outline your vesting schedule. And if you quit after three months, like me, you probably won't get anything. See why they're an incentive play for you to stay? At this point, you're probably like, cool, but how much are these suckers worth to me? Well, realistically, when you receive your job offer, the company will value your RSUs based on the company's stock price at the time. For example, if you're supposed to earn a thousand shares and shares are worth $20 at the time of your offer, they will tell you that your RSU compensation is worth $20,000 over our imaginary four year vesting period. So $5,000 per year. But really, this number is kind of a shot in the dark. So my meta example is actually perfect for illustrating this point. When I was granted my RSU, so it was about 140 shares. They were worth $50,000 over four years because at the time, Meta's stock price was around $352 per share. Today, it's worth $118 per share. Crucially, and this is the key, they did not promise me $50,000 worth of stock. They promised me 140 something shares that were worth 50 grand at the time, given the company's share price of $352. But today, that same equity compensation would be worth around $16,000. All that to say, your RSUs will probably be worth something, even if the stock price plummets after you join the company, totally coincidentally, obviously, but you might not want to anchor to the value you're quoted when you receive your offer. Of course, this could go the other way too. If you joined a company and then the share price skyrocketed, your RSUs would be worth more than you were originally promised. And once they vest, they are yours forever. You can do whatever you want with them. You can keep them, sell them, turn them into an abstract art project. It's up to you. So at this point, you're probably like, great, this sounds fun. How are they taxed? The important thing to know about RSUs is that you have very little control over when and how they are taxed which is in many ways the reason that these are a simpler financial instrument. So we have a one-two punch with taxes on RSUs. Are you ready? Tax punch one is ordinary income tax. RSUs are almost always taxed like income when they vest. And I'm hesitant to say absolutely always as this is an arena of compensation that is pretty hairy, but for the most part, you can expect to pay taxes on the fair market value of the stock at the time of vesting. This means that if your 250 shares vest, so for all intents and purposes, this just means are delivered to you for $20 per share after three months, this looks like $5,000 of compensation to the IRS and is subject to all of your normal taxes. It's customary for some of the stock to be withheld and surrendered right away in order to pay the tax bill on the shares. But the important takeaway here is, most of the time, you are taxed on this when it's awarded, regardless of what you do with it. So whether or not you liquidate everything or hang on for the long haul does not impact your upfront tax bill. That being said, there's also tax punch two, which is capital gains taxes. The second punch comes in the form of capital gains 
if you hang on to those RSUs. So let's say you're a risky rich girl and you have not heard any of my diatribes about why it's probably unwise to hold a sizable portion of your net worth in individual stock or company stock. So you put it all on black, you hang on to those RSUs for the long haul. And let's say you were wise to shirk my risk averse advice because it worked out for you. Your company succeeds wildly, clearly in no small part because of your fantastic contributions and your shares that were worth $5,000 at the time of vesting are now worth $20,000 many years later. If you were to turn around and sell your shares to cash out your fat stack of G's, you owe capital gains taxes on the difference between the value at vesting, five grand, and the value at sale, 20 grand. So you owe taxes on $15,000. In this instance, you probably don't care that you're going to pay capital gains taxes because you just made 15 grand for doing nothing. Now, if you were to sell your shares immediately at vesting, you would theoretically owe zero capital gains taxes because you cashed out, you took your chips off the table right away, you did not give them a chance to go up or down, which is why this is usually the most quote unquote responsible option. I am not in the business of making recommendations about how to handle these complicated financial instruments, but the general, general best practice with RSUs is to sell, read, turn the shares into cash and diversify into something a little more suitable, like an index fund, though it should be stated this is like taking your chips off black and then spreading them out everywhere. Here's what Scott and James had to say. And there's no unique tax benefit to holding RSUs after they vest, you know, they're, they're, it's so because of that, I think what we would tell clients to do or anyone to do is when you receive RSUs, don't think of them as RSUs, think of it as receiving a lump sum of cash. If you received a lump sum of cash and you would take that to go buy company stock, well, great. Just let your RSUs vest and keep the company stock. But there's people talk about the endowment effect. If we tend to value those things that we hold on to more than if we had to go purchase it new or if we don't already have it. And so we, because of inertia, because of that, because of whatever, a lot of people tend to just say, oh, it's vesting. I'm not thinking about it and it keeps doing its thing. But if you can consciously think of it as what would I do if this cash was given to me as a cash bonus? Would I save for retirement in another way? Would I pay down debt? Would I save for a home? Would I pay for a trip? Or would I buy my company stock? Unless my answer is I would go buy company stock, there's really not a good compelling reason to keep your RSUs because there's not a tax benefit for doing so versus just selling them as soon as they vest. Scott and James also had a cautionary note about not succumbing to lifestyle creep when you begin earning RSUs. If you can live life on your salary and not rely on the RSUs, um, you're going to build wealth really quickly. If you creep your lifestyle to the point where you need the RSUs to live life, um, it really takes away from flexibility for you.